welcome to our podcast for transcending the negative mind and for the astrological sign of cancer this month. I am Julia Melville, energy worker, kundalini yoga teacher, psychotherapist, connecting our mind and our body and on a mission to break free from the mental mind. Zoe Hind, who joins me again this month, is a fabulous soul astrologer, well-being coach and personal trainer. Welcome, Zoe. It's lovely to be with you again. Great to be here. Would you like to tell us a little bit about cancer to start us off? Certainly. Okay, so cancer is the summer ocean. And as we tune into the energy of that feminine water, we're taking the journey from the magnetosphere, from the primal universe, the holding principle of the divine feminine, through the oceans, which are an external replication of summer water. So if you imagine the whales in the ocean, they're the mammals of the ocean. So we're dealing with the mothering, the feminine, the holding principle. And it's even said that whales download a new song each year to sing to heal the earth. So tune into that beyond light, beyond sound, beyond gravity, womb-like, mammalian, sonic energy. And then, of course, in our body, that would be the mother's womb, the holding waters that we come through and we're birthed through. So that's essentially the energy of Cancerian. It's the divine feminine. It's the human feminine. It's the oceans and the waters of our planet. And this is linked very closely to our mental emotional loop as it's ruled by the moon. So we're dealing with the moon cycles and how we all go on our mental emotional journey every month to get to our self-discovery and hopefully be able to rebirth ourselves. So that, in essence, is the energy of cancer. Lovely. Thank you. So, yes, talking about the divine feminine energy and we all have feminine energy whether we're female or male as women we have divine feminine energy and we hold this energy in our womb as as you were just saying Zoe and it's incredible to think that as women we can grow life in our body and it doesn't get any more powerful than that our passion and our fire comes from our womb Many times I've heard people curse their menstrual cycle curse being a word that can be used for this shedding In Kundalini Yoga, we call it our moon cycle because it is a cycle like the moon every month, waxing and waning. I think of this menstrual shedding as the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Just prior to our period starting, we can feel grouchy and tired. And this is our body letting us know that we need to slow down, be quiet, go within and allow the body to use all the energy it needs to help us on this part of the journey. The more we fight it or ignore it, the grouchier we become. And did you know that the colour red contains unlimited energy, heat, vitality and power? So often the menstrual cycle is dismissed and for some people it is awkward and embarrassing, for men and for women. Luckily the energy is shifting at this time and it is time to honour this incredible feminine process, to honour our bodies. If you don't already do this, start to map your menstrual cycle with the moon, the full moon, the waxing and waning moon and the new moon. Chart your moods and notice the pattern of the flow when you feel energised, when you feel peaceful, when you feel the need for quiet and solitude. Beautiful. So looking at the moon cycles and how we can work with them, I actually have a course on this. So we have the dark moon, the new moon, and the full moon and the dark moon is the time of shedding and clearing out ready for the new moon which is the fresh energy and then the full moon is the equivalent of ovulation so be a little bit careful when you go to workshops and read books on this subject because quite often they've missed out the dark moon and they've mixed it so that they're talking about menstruating on a full moon and having your period align with the full moon. Um, But really, that would be the dark moon, as the full moon is the big egg in the sky. That's the ovulation and the potency. 
So just a word of warning on that one. The logic of the older wisdom um, would be the dark moon, new moon, full moon. So if you work with a moon calendar, you can have a look at what phase the moon's in. You can decide to let go every month on the dark moon. And in your chart, this will be in a different house each month. So it's like being able to let go of something in a different place in your life so that you're attending to your housework. And each new moon will be in a different house so you can start new things in a different part of your life. And each full moon will bring reflection or reward in a different house of your chart. So very, very powerful technique there, not just having a moon calendar, but also being able to place each dark, new and full moon in your chart so that you can see where it is that you'd like to release, set intentions or bring things to completion or reflection. Another thing I see happening, which is slightly out of character, is people tend to want to party or do something like that on the full moon. They see it as an outward thing. But try and view that as reflection, as meditation, as stillness as well. So the new moon is actually the active one. Just to mention the divine numerology of the moon, we have a 28 to 29 and a half day cycle of a mooth which means there's actually 13 moons in the year. And this is why the number 13 is so potent and so demonized. It's actually a very powerful number, not just for the moons, but it's also the number solar of Christ consciousness. So we're resonating there with the number 13 as well and the power and the potential of that lunar cycle when we break free of the grid calendar and we get back into spiral time. Lovely also to be reminded about the dark moon, um, which is such an important time. Because I was thinking about the uh, aspect of creativity with the birthing of projects and how uh, it's, you know, checking in with where the cycle of the moon is when you're planning something. Because when you're in the dark moon, that's not the time to be launching a new business or a, some critical meeting or something like that. So, yes, that's great to be reminded of that the energy of cancer is also about mother issues the old saying of she is just like her mother when we start to become more aware of our patterns of behavior and the stories we tell ourselves we can think back to where we've learned these patterns from and this is no judgment to any parent we are all conditioned from a young age we want to release the energy of the conditioning in the patterns as we don't want to carry these energies forward either in ourselves or in our children. And one way to do this is to become aware of the language that you speak to yourself, the stories that you tell yourself, the repetitive sentences that you say to yourself, because when they're repetitive sentences, they've come down the generations into us. It's good to pay attention to those be curious about them rather than getting caught up in the energy of them and curiosity is wonderful because it keeps judgment away wonderful and yeah we've got the link between there the, the mind and the emotions so our words our thoughts actually imprint on the cells of our body the cells take that as an instruction and magnify it so it's very important to look at our internal dialogue and the connection between our thoughts and our feelings, because the moon is often just seen to do with the feelings, and yet it's our subconscious where we imprint on the subconscious matter either a positive affirmation or a negative affirmation, and then that becomes part of our being. So the higher mind really is the intuition of the cells, the cellular wisdom, and this is our guidance system. So for anybody with strong Cancerian energy in their chart, you'll know that every month you go on a roller coaster of a ride, experiencing the emotions of each sign every two and a half days. But there's not much point in this unless we're learning from it. So some emotions are actually useful and some are not useful. So Cancerians and people with a lot of Cancerian energy in their chart, and for all of us this month, we can have a look at whether we feel expanded or contracted. And this is such a great practice because instead of getting into the thought process of, oh, I feel sad, and before I even go and have a look at why, I get into the story of why I feel sad, and then that creates 
that wheel turning so that we get caught into the emotions and the memories. Mem is the old word for water. So instead of getting involved in that, we can actually use our body as a compass, really, and say, or a guidance system and say, do I feel contracted or expanded? And here we're looking at the waxing and the waning of the moon, that kind of energy. If something contracts in your body, then that's worth a look. But possibly write down what you're thinking at that moment and put it to one side until you're in a much more strong and empowered mental position to go and challenge the base belief there. But if you're feeling expanded, then you can afford to just go with it because like no other year and going forwards, we'll be leading by our energy and our vibration. Cancer's opposite Capricorn. We've come to the first opposition here. So Capricorn would say, I should do it. I should work hard. I shouldn't put myself first. I should get the job done. But if you have a moment where you feel really expanded and you want to give yourself a little bit more time to enjoy, to be present, to reflect, to meditate, then that's the permission slip, really. If something's expansive, then follow that path. So there's ways that we can work with the mind to actually imprint on ourselves positive affirmations and to give ourselves permission to follow that cellular intelligence that's guiding us so much more effectively than the mental aspect of ourselves will ever be able to do. I love that you've mentioned Capricorn, that it's opposite Capricorn, because there's that bit that should, you know, is the word should. I always have a bit of resistance to the word should, because I find it's quite a critical word. So I always like to change should into could. I could do this. I could do that. Um, whereas if, if it should, it's like we are pushing up that mountain, I guess, <laughs> with the with the Capricorn energy. Yeah, I love that. I really love that. So then we come to the power of the feminine and the power lies in our imagination so once we're out of the should mind once we're out of the mental emotional memory loop then we can start to use the power of our imagination now if you break down the word imagination it's i magi nation which is the birthplace of your inner magician so the imagination is the real water power we incubate in our womb of our imagination. We allow ourselves to swim around in the feeling of something in the present tense that we'd actually like to bring in to our future. And this is the real power of manifestation. It's not going to be done by writing down positive affirmations because for every positive affirmation, there's actually its opposite inherent in that sentence. But if we start to use the magnetic power of the feminine waters, then just imagine a scenario as you're there and feel it, and fire it up, then you'll start to attract that to you in quantum manifestation. So this way we're going out of the thoughts and feelings, out of the negative imprints of the subconscious, and we're starting to use the waters of our body for what we truly want and we're truly passionate about. And as you mentioned, that fire, that passion in the belly, that's really uh, our life spark and what we can follow this year and going forwards as our natural guidance system so that we create for ourselves the happiest possible life. Lovely. I love that. The feminine cycle is also like the seasons as women move into their menopause, because also there's that that fire and that power in that energy as well and again this is a time of huge energy shifts and huge power and many women launch new businesses in the years post menopause it's like we can suddenly harness that power and channel it and direct it in a in a creative way i want to just go back a bit to when you were talking about the maternal the you know the mothering aspect and the maternal water and and to think about the maternal water that you were created within the softness and quiet of that space. How do you mother yourself and care for yourself? How do you nurture you? How do you love yourself? Love is a state of being and often we cut that part of ourselves off, feeling we're not worthy of it through our conditioning. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the polarity, really. We're dealing with the law of polarity with cancer. So we're at the summer solstice. 
which is the lightest part of the year. And at the opposite, there's the darkest part of the year. So we're with the chariot card here, which you'll always see a black and white checkerboard um, symbolizing the light and the dark and that polarity. So definitely we're looking at the positive and the negative and what we're doing to ourselves and going in and healing those inner waters. So they're looking at our intentions, our inner dialogue, and replacing negativity with positivity at this time. And I do feel that tarot can be a wonderful learning tool. People seem to think that, oh, if I get a tarot deck, I'll have to give readings. But if you have got a tarot deck, just get out the suit of cups, which will go from one to king. Um, and just have a look at the state of water and how it changes. It's really enlightening. Sometimes the water will be stagnant. Sometimes it will be fresh and flowing. Sometimes it will be full of potential. And I love the word potential because it's like you've got a big pot with all that water in there. And we know that when we're cooking, we can stir intention into water and that water holds intelligence outside of the body as well, the, the sacred cauldron. So if you've got a tarot deck, get the cups suit out. Maybe have a look at the Queen of Cups for inspiration as she's always seated which is a holding position, um, ready to birth. Create is just means grow. The etymology of create means to grow. So we're dealing with growing in the womb, whether that's a business, whether that's an inspiration, whether that's a child. We've got the potential to, to sit down, to reflect, to take time, to incubate, to grow and to nourish our inner waters. So that's a fun game that we can have a look at there having a look at the water aspect in the tarot deck and some days you'll feel like the the dark and stagnant one and you'll realize that you need to refresh yourself and other times you'll feel full of potential and creativity lovely thank you i'm definitely going to give that a go myself thinking of the element of water also makes me think about aspects where we can get into uh, how we can use water basically in um, in our everyday life and it my mind started to turn towards cold water swimming or duking which is something that I started doing a while ago and the benefits of it are are just massive they're great for our bloodstream and they're really good for joint pain it boosts our dopamine levels and it increases the release of endorphins and it can really help our our creative flow, it can really help our mental health as well. So if you are able to wild swim, then that's amazing. And if not, then you can turn your shower to cold. You could have a tub in your garden, There are, have a cold bath. There are sort of various different aspects. And the way to do it is definitely to build it up slowly. You want to just go in for a few seconds to start with and then just build it up and build it up. And I never go in for more than three three minutes probably I find that's quite enough for me uh, but you might be stronger and if you already cold water uh, duke you will know what I'm talking about but it really is an amazing way to to really center us and to bring us into ourselves and bring us into the present as well when when the energies are all a bit crazy around us and the other thing about cold water and also actually dry brushing of the skin, which is something I came across in uh, Kundalini Yoga, is really good for our lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is the waters of the body. So at the end of this, I'm going to share an exercise with you uh, to do to help your lymphatic system. Excellent. It's so lovely to have practical aspects, isn't it? And yes, that cold water swimming, that has to be uh, done slowly and, and build it up for sure, but hugely beneficial. So another thing you can do is have a look at what your favourite kind of water is. First of all, we could start off in the body. When we talk about the waters of the body, you've got uh, the cells, which have a membrane. That's your memory in your brain and the intelligence that's held in that water that potential but we've also got the fluids of the body so we're mentioning the lymphatic system but you've got tears you've got sweat so you could actually do a meditation on and uh, on and into your body to be able to heal those waters but what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of water in nature 
are you a lake at midnight or a roaring waterfall? Because that might show you not only part of your uh, own unique fabric, but your connection with nature as well. So many women are connected to the ocean. So if we take that one to one side, then can you think of another aspect of water in nature? Um, and the first one that comes up, then just have a look at what that represents to you and what that's bringing out of you in your appreciation for it. But then we move on to etheric water. So we're talking about the divine feminine. We've spoken about mothering and the earth feminine, but we're dealing with the waters of the soul. So our soul is our magnetic body, really. It's our record, reporting back our emotional experience back to source. That's the way I like to see it. Um, we're looking at intuition. Where does your intuition and inspiration come from? How can you stir the waters of your soul? Are you connected to your soul purpose? Because in many readings, people are very functional with their career path. I'm going to do this, and if I apply myself there, and it's all a bit like a concrete ladder, we can actually see what I need to do to get to that point. But when we start to talk about soul purpose, it has to be felt. And this is where a lot of people fall down that are living too much in their mind. But can you see yourself as a soul that came here with a purpose? Can you think back in your life as to something that gave you goosebumps or when you just felt a calling towards an action or a person? or a place. So the divine feminine there would be connectable to through knowing that we are soul and through that goddess line, the, the female creator force of which women are part, men are, are directly coming down from the, the masculine force and women are coming down from the feminine force by dint of the fact that we've chosen the gender of our body. But we all have a soul. We all have that calling and that purpose. So one way to connect more with the divine feminine will be to actually connect with your soul, with that sense of purpose, that sense of calling. You might consider past lives. This is fascinating to look at past lives because we can't grab a book off the shelf and just go, oh, yes, I was a Roman centurion. We just have this feelings or phobias towards something which are slightly untouchable, slightly undefinable. We're obviously dealing with the dream state here as well. That's another lovely way to aspect, to um, connect to that aspect of ourselves. But do you have past life memories? Do you have a calling to a certain era in the past or issues that you're sorting out in this life that you know don't come from this life? Uh, and this is where we take it beyond nature, beyond the body, beyond the, the mother-child connection and start to really swim in the waters of our soul. And so that would be a really good walking meditation for the month of cancer. That is a lovely suggestion. I'd like to share with you an exercise for the lymphatic system. And it's really good for if you're feeling a little bit closed or you're not feeling very happy because this exercise helps to open up the chest and heart space. The lymphatic system is around the armpit area. So obviously this is gonna work on that area. You want to hold your hands out to the side with your palms open and facing up, and you're going to move your hands alternatively quite quickly to the center of your body. It's a very simple exercise. You can close your eyes, breathe long and deep, and through your nose. This exercise balances the hemispheres of the brain. The right and the left side of the body need to work in tandem. So find the rhythm. And if your hands start to knock, it might be that you're a little bit out of balance with the hemispheres of your brain. So just correct it and continue. And then if you're able to speed it up a little bit. And then at the end, so continue for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, you can take it up to 10 minutes, just depending on how you are feeling with it. And then at the end, inhale deeply, hold your breath in for a moment, and then exhale, and then just sit with the movement and the energies in your body. Excellent, lovely practical aspect there. That could be done lying down as well, I guess. Yes, I guess it could be. 
I do it sitting up, but yes, it could be done lying down. It might be, I don't know. I will try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, finish off with some of the uh, aspects that are coming up astrologically for this month. We're heading towards the summer solstice. I mentioned that earlier with the chariot card of it being the light and dark. So we're at the lightest part of the year, crossing over that sacred threshold to enter into the darker half of the year as the sun starts to lose its strength. So the nights will start to draw in, which seems way too soon every year. But there you go. This solstice, we've got Neptune turning retrograde again, which we had last solstice as well. And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, a very profound water sign. And Neptune is like a tuning fork, so very relevant because a retrograde takes us inwards. So this will take us into tune in with our cellular knowing and our intuition to dive into the dream state, to be able to go in and find our dreams and incubate them. So another lovely combination there with the solstice and Neptune retrograde. And that's about a six, seven month retrograde of that one because it's a, a distant planet. We're talking about cancer ruled by the moon. We've just come through the eclipse season, which was very relevant for Gemini, bringing many messages and much wisdom. And now we have the full moon on the 24th of um, June, which is the day that Neptune turns retrograde. So that's a powerful full moon in Capricorn on the 24th on the day that Neptune turns retrograde or thereabouts. And then we have the new moon in Cancer on the 11th of July. By the 11th of July, we'll be out of the third aspect of Mercury retrograde. So we should have that clarity. So where we've left the mind to bring in inspiration and different perspective during the Mercury retrograde in Gemini, gone in and cleaned up our waters, then by the time we come out from the new moon, around the 11th of July, we should hopefully have achieved mental, emotional clarity and balance. Wonderful. How wonderful. So helpful to hear all that. So thank you all so much for listening to this podcast for cancer. Next month, Zoe and I will be together again to discuss the astrological aspects of Leo fire so that's exciting i'm looking forward to that and, and the divine feminine, because we don't just go all out on the female side of this we'll be dealing with the divine masculine and the honor of that primal force for leo so get ready to get fired up love that yes always important to remember the divine masculine too thank you all so much for listening and we look forward to being with you next month